What's up, fight fans? Jim Greeshover, Cage Side Seat, the best MMA talk with the biggest names in the sport from the best seat in the house. And tonight, the best seat in the house is at a blackjack table at the OYO here in Vegas. And the biggest name in the sport that I'm with is Paul Felder, who will be at the table with Joe Rogan and John Anik. McGregor and Cerrone, a couple of guys you might have heard of. UFC 246 this weekend, but right now we're here for Grand Leanda Tequila, an amazing product. And I know you're in camp, you're in training right now, so you're dealing blackjack, you're having fun out here tonight at this event, and it's just a fun time for everyone, but you're not drinking, right? And you're not no. eating, so. I'm not drinking, I'm not eating, but I am having fun. And I'm here with Felice, and this is hilarious, and uh, these guys are great, and this product is great. When I am not in camp, I have drank much of this. Do not wake up feeling groggy. This is actually tequila that I can really get behind. I, I was always a whiskey guy until very recently, and it's helping the figure out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. He says he's weighing about 180 right now, cutting down drastically for his next fight, down to 155. You're getting to fight all over the world now. I mean, unbelievable opportunities for you on the TV side, but you're clearly nowhere near done as a fighter, which is really unique because Dom and Dom, you know, is going to fight again. He's yeah, you know, going to get back in there, DC, obviously. But for you, you're a guy who's going all over the world fighting in Abu Dhabi and now what, New Zealand coming up? Yeah, it's uh, man, it's it's places that I would never go ever in my life if I wasn't fighting, if I wasn't working as a broadcast guy with the UFC. So, you know, sometimes you got to sit back and realize, you know, I'm living the dream, man. I'm here in Vegas. I'm calling these fights tomorrow. I'll be in New Zealand fighting their guy in a sold-out stadium. So it's just things are on the up right now, and I'm just trying to keep with it and stay positive, man. I'm loving it right now. But you're in camp right now, too. I mean, yeah. and you're literally just over a month away from your fight. So you're in camp, you're traveling, and it's a, it's a pretty decent flight for you to get here. You're fighting in a different country, completely different time zone, managing all these things at one time, calling fights, doing appearances. Busy life, man. How do you do it all? Well, you know, one of the things, especially when you're in camp, you need occasional distractions, things that, you know, I'm not sitting in my room alone. I live in an apartment in Milwaukee with nobody else, just me some Netflix. No dog, nothing? Nothing, man. And uh, that's how I like to be. I isolate myself. I train three times a day and I've got a lot of weight to lose. I like to have that almost rocky mentality and kind of going away and suffering a little bit. It's what makes brings the best out of me. But every now and then it's good to break that. Duke's here. My man Scott Cushman is here. Holding pads. My jiu-jitsu coach Daniel Wanderlei is here. My whole team is here for Anthony Pettis and Macy Barber yeah. fighting tomorrow night. So this wasn't a vacation for me. I've worked out every day I've been here. I've actually lost a lot of weight since I've taken this trip because I've kind of let my cortisol levels get down a little bit and I'm relaxing a little bit. That's really nice to hear from you because that's a busy schedule in camp, cutting weight, not eating a lot. You know, we yeah. talked about fasting earlier today and my 16 hour fast is a lot different than your 16 hour fast because of your workouts. So yeah. you're doing 16 hour fasts. You're training every day, what, what, two or three times a day? Monday through Friday is three times a day. Um, Obviously not all at the same intensity levels. Normally, Monday I'll wake up, I have strength and conditioning at 8.30, then we have 1.30 MMA sparring, and then six o'clock is the madness on the pads with Scott Cushman and Duke Rufus where we just get after it for about an hour and a half. That's gotta be unreal to do that with those yeah, two guys. To be a fly on the wall when we're all hitting pads, you got me, uh, Anthony Pettis, Gerald Mershart, Bilal Muhammad, myself, Sergio Pettis, uh, Manny. Uh, Woodley when he's know, there. Woodley when he's in. It's yeah. just the list goes on. I'm going to miss people. Macy, everybody that's UFC fighter over there. It's just, it's incredible to see everybody's hard work, man. So what's your secret to staying sharp on the air? Because we all know you need to be really well fed to be a good broadcaster. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, this, I've been in this for 25 years. So what's your secret to staying, you know, sharp mentally without all that caloric intake behind you? Well, one of the good things I have going on is uh, my my boy Ian Larios from uh, Lockhart is here. And he's actually been cooking all my meals that I'm eating every day, giving me pre-workout shakes and things like that. So keeping me on the exact path that I would be on if I was living back in Milwaukee right now. So nothing has changed except that I'm in a different city. But it's fight week, I'm feeling that energy, man. This just makes me get excited to go and fight in New Zealand in five weeks. Yeah, and we talked about cutting weight as a broadcaster. You only have to make sure that the jacket buttons, which is, you know. Is it not gonna pop off and hit the camera in the face? That's exactly right. And you know, John Anik, the struggle is real for guys like us. You know, If I had eaten much this week, this shirt would not fit. Yes. So you know that, but it's not like what you guys are doing to fight. No. So when, when I look at what you're doing and the path that you're on, I mean, this is your first headlining fight, isn't yes. it too? All the way over in New Zealand? Yeah, but you know what? Thank you, man. But uh, the territory is not, not really going to be an issue. You know, I kind of feed off of uh, that crazy energy, whether it's negative or positive. And I, I'll be nervous. And if he's not nervous, then something's wrong. So 
you know, that's that's how every day is when you're in the octagon, man. If your nerves aren't up and you're not nervous to be there, then um, you're not alive. You're not alive. Yeah, Cowboy says he still throws up before every fight. And look, he's in his 50, 51st fight now coming up, exactly. 33, 34 in the UFC. What do you think about this card? I'm not going to ask you for a prediction because I know you're calling the fights and I'm not going to give one either. But I like the style. And, and I just think too many people are counting Cowboy out because Connor's Connor. And I think too many people are counting Anthony Pettis out. And yes. it drives me, I don't understand how he's an underdog in this fight. Hey, listen, that's how Anthony likes it, you know, as his teammate. And obviously, I can't dive into it too much because i got to stay fair tomorrow night. But... I've, I've been in camp with the man. I've sparred the man. I've been there. I've sweat with him. I know what he's capable of. I know how talented he is, man. It's unreal. And people still to this day sleep on this guy. And it, it blows my mind. It blows all my coaches' minds. But that's just how that man likes it. He likes, for being a guy who's called Showtime, he's very mild-mannered, man. Anthony's a nice guy. Likes to stay chill, hang out with his girl and his kid, and that's it. So you're going to see the best showtime on Saturday night. That I can tell you for sure. What other fight are you looking forward to? I know Macy's on the card too, your teammate Macy Barber, and she's a huge prospect. And yeah. everyone wants to see Connor and Cowboy, and obviously yeah. Holly and, and Raquel, the rematch is awesome too. Anthony's fight. But besides the ones that everyone's talking about, what other fight or fights are you looking forward to? Probably Feely and, and Sadiq Youssef, yeah. right? Oh, I think we have to talk about yeah. that fight. Um, you know, that's that's a featherweight fight that's really going to launch one of those guys into into some big spotlight because now they're given an opportunity. They're already proven that they're talented fighters, right? But now they've been given an opportunity to be on the stage that they're on for this Conor McGregor fight, which I don't care who you are. When you're put on that stage, eyes are on you for the whole night. So one of them is going to emerge a new star at 145. And Paul Felder will be calling those fights. Two Irish Germans right here, by the way. And, you know, you're one of those dudes, man. I'm so happy for you. And that's, I mean, most fighters are awesome. You know that. It's a great right. sport, great people. But you're just one of those guys. You'll talk to anyone. You'll hang out with anyone. You're doing events like this. You're cutting weight. You're in a camp. You're calling yeah. fights. You're just, you're enjoying it. You're living life. And you're getting every squeeze out of this, man. And you're smiling yeah. the whole time. I'm trying, dude. It's one of those things. You know, I'm 35. I've got a daughter at home. Uh, this isn't going to last. I'm not going to be asked to do the these TV things. will. The TV will the last. The TV will last. But this <laughs> being a fighter, you know, being in shape and having to travel around, like you start to get this kind of like when you know you're starting to look good and you feel good, and to be out and doing that, it's, you know, it's I'll be a fat old dude someday. So I might as well live it up and enjoy being the in shape younger guy right now. Man, anything else you want to say to the fans? I know Grand Leyenda's happy to have you out here in yes. Oyo Hotel and Casino here in Vegas. It's a fight week. It's it's awesome for you not to be fighting even though you're in camp. But just last thing for anybody out there who's watching, who's a fan of yours. Yeah, just thank everybody so much for their support. Recently, my social media has been blowing up with you guys, reaching out, liking my videos, liking the, the cooking tidbits I've been doing. Also, go follow Bilal Muhammad. The guy is absolutely hilarious. He's been making fun of me. So if you don't like me, go follow Bilal. If you do like me, also follow him. And please check out my fight. February 22nd, main event. Me and Dan Hooker are going to throw down. It will be a bloodbath in there between us two. But your boy's going to come out on top. And make sure you buy the pay-per-view, UFC 246, because Joe Rogan gets to sit next to him tomorrow night and call the fights. I mean, what's that like? I mean, say, hey, man, this seat's taken, Joe. You know, I like to sit next to Joe. He, he cracks me up. He's a very, very intelligent guy, man. Yeah. You know, the guy, this is what the guy does for a living, is interviews people, talks for a living, does comedy. He's an actor and a martial artist. So, I, you know, it, it's always an honor to sit next to Joe, and I consider him a, a buddy of mine. All right, well, it's an honor to sit next to you and to stand next to you. Great talking with you, man. It's good seeing you at this event. And, of course, we'll be pulling for you next month in New Zealand. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, man. All right, Paul Felder, one of the best fighters in the world, one of the best analysts in our sport, obviously, and just one of the hell of a guy, but not really a good blackjack dealer, I'm just going to say. That's 100% true. All right, we're here at the OYO in Vegas. What a great night it is with Grenley and a tequila and Paul Felder. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, man. All right.